our topic for today, as you all know, is the parenting trap and moving beyond good enough. Okay, it's going to be interesting. I know you'll enjoy it. Now, we know all of us that parenting is one of the hardest jobs for all of us. As a parent, anybody who's been there, and I know all of you have, it's one of the tasks that we take on and we don't have any training for it. We drop into this place and we have to look after these children. And it's the one thing that we want to give our best to. We don't take it lightly. We give our all to it and we want to be the best that we can for our children so that they also thrive. Before we get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. You know, my name is Jenny Amar already, and um, I've been in the field of Montessori for 25 years now. I started as uh, I did my training in 97 to 98. I started as a teacher first, then I moved on and I became a supervisor at a Montessori preschool. And then I went into training in 2005. So I've been training teachers, sharing my passion for Montessori. And I'm a mother to triplet boys. These are my three boys you can see here, one, two, and three. Um, and yeah, that's my claim to fame that I have triplets. I'm, I announce it quite proudly to everybody. Um, I'm also a certified transformational parent coach from the J Institute of Parenting in the United States. Uh, what is good enough parenting? Good enough parenting is a form of parenting where the parents are basically providing the basic needs of their children, giving their children whatever they need. And we'll talk about what the basic needs of children are. And at the same time, we're providing this environment for our children where they feel nurtured, okay? So the good enough parenting is telling parents that you don't have to be perfect, okay? So many of us are just thinking that, you know, to be able to do the best for my child, I have to be perfect. I have to do everything, you know, the best, best, best. And we're just trying everything under the sun to be that parent. But they're saying, listen, it's not important to be perfect, but you can still raise successful children and give them your best, okay? It's kind of like, they're trying to take the pressure off parenting because, you know, when you, you feel pressured, you're never going to really do the best job, right? Because you're doing it under stress and parenting should be a fun, enjoyable journey, right? Our kids are only young ones. We want to enjoy this journey of parenting with them. So my question to you is, is good enough good enough? How do we know, okay, whether, you know, good enough is really enough for my child? How do I measure what is good enough? Everybody's good enough is different, right? So what is the scale for this? I mean, who tells me that, yes, Jenny, what you're doing is good enough and, you know, what somebody else is doing isn't really reaching the mark, right? Everybody has a different standard. Maybe I'm the parent who believes going outdoors, crafting with my children, uh, you know, cooking with them is good enough, all right? But there's somebody else who's sitting there and doing math and reading books and a whole different range of activities. So who's good enough? Is it me? Is it them? How do we know, right? We want our children to get everything, but how do we know that they really are getting everything when there is really no standard of measurement? That's where we get into what we call the parent trap because we put ourselves into a box. I'm gonna follow this and you know, I'm good enough. That's it, right? I'm in this box. Either I feel I'm good enough, I've trapped myself there and I'm not growing, or am I good enough? And I'm always, you know, struggling with that. Which one is it? We don't want to put ourselves into either box. We want to really be out there learning so that we can give our children the best. Now, our mind is a very, very, very strong, strong tool, okay? It's very powerful. Whatever you tell your mind, it's going to believe you. So if I tell myself I'm good enough, then am I limiting myself? Am I stopping myself from being better? We all know that every single day that we are here on this earth, irrespective of just our children in life itself, we are always looking to grow and be better and improve ourselves. So is it okay then to tell myself, you know what, I'm good enough. 
what I'm doing for my kids is okay. Rather, we want to strive so that we can be better for our children, right? We want to strive so that we can do more, so that we can go beyond what is just good enough. That's what we are trying to put forward to you today. What we need to do as parents is grow and grow with our children. Our children are constantly evolving. What their needs are today are not going to be their needs tomorrow, right? Tomorrow they need something else. Tomorrow their interests are different. Their needs are different. So if I have put myself in this box and I've said, well, I'm good enough, then I'm not evolving with my child. I'm not providing for the needs that are coming up as they grow. Of course, anything that we take up is a challenge. So it will be challenging to go beyond being a good enough parent. But what we can guarantee you 100% is that the rewards are worth the effort. You put in that extra work and you will see what comes back at you when you see your child thriving and living their best life. That is the biggest reward you could ever ask for. Now, it's important to understand that we're all going to make mistakes, all right? That's just a part of life. All parents will make mistakes. And being a good enough parent does not mean you have to be perfect. We talked about that. It's through our mistakes we learn. We, we are open to our children making mistakes, right? When our children make mistakes, we help them to learn the better way, the alternative way to do things. But we don't, you know, expect them to also be perfect, right? So how can we be perfect? We are on a learning curve, curve both of us. So when we want to parent beyond, what happens is that we take a step back from what we're doing right now and we examine our parenting style without bias, okay? Looking at it objectively and knowing that we can strive to be better than the basic that we are choosing for today, okay? I know that, okay, this is what I've done today. I can get even better as time goes on. I can be better than good enough. I can go beyond that for my child and for myself. I told you that children have their basic needs and that's what good enough parenting says that we should provide for them. So what are those basic needs? Children need love, definitely. They need a loving home, supportive parents. They need a good education, which of course parents will provide. They need that feeling of security. Wherever they are, they know that they are loved. They know that they are accepted. They know that they are wanted. That gives them the feeling of security. They need to have positive role models, okay? People that they can look up to, people that they see are, you know, living their life with values that the children will also imbibe and take on and grow with. They need consistency. So there is a routine. What we're providing for the children is always constant for them. And they need that stability in their homes to know that when I come home, things are always the way they are. I can trust this environment. And in this kind of environment, they thrive. Okay. I'm going to talk about positive role models for a bit here because when we are positive role models for our children, they're watching everything we do. And I mean, that's not even something I have to tell you, but you have all noticed this in your children. They pick up our habits and our mannerisms, good ones and even the bad ones. Sometimes you see your child, uh, you know, um, acting out in a situation and you look at them and you know, oh my gosh, he picked that up from me. That's how I reacted when, you know, I lost my keys and I lost my temper. And he's seeing that and he's picked that up as well. They are really, really watching and listening to everything we do. So if we are positive role models, doesn't that mean that we want to learn and we want to show them that we are always striving to be better for them and for ourselves? That's also something they're going to learn from. We are not becoming, you know, complacent and just accepting that, okay, whatever I'm doing is, this is what I can do for my child. It's good enough. But we always want to give better and grow for them. Okay. So in addition to giving and providing for these basic needs, 
it's important for us to strive not for perfection, not to be the best parent on planet Earth, but we want our children to reach their maximum potential. Every child is different. My child's maximum potential will be different from Mary's child's maximum potential. So it's for me to provide the correct environment, the correct tools, the correct experiences for my child to thrive. Okay, so good enough parenting definitely is beneficial, all right, but it doesn't help them enough. It isn't taking them to their maximum potential, all right? It doesn't help us as parents to learn what is it that my child needs, okay? What does my individual child need to thrive in life? It puts me in a place where I am just doing what I feel might be okay, all right, without any guidelines from anywhere, without any specific tools, you know, um, I'm providing what I think might be okay for my child. But if we want to do the best for our child, then the first thing we can do is stay informed, learn about my child's growth and my child's development. What is it that they need? at every age and every stage of their years growing up, okay? And when I know what those needs are, that's when I'll be able to provide for my child, okay? So it's really important to learn about a uh, child's developmental milestones, uh, you know, what they're achieving, what their needs are at each age. We need to be able to give them, to provide them, with age-appropriate activities, because what a two-year-old needs is definitely completely different from what a three, four, and five-year-old needs, right? The activities need to be challenging enough when you know children are doing things that are not stimulating them, they're not challenging enough for them, then they get bored, all right? When they get bored, then they start acting out in ways and you know, then people end up calling them naughty, uh, people end up calling them badly behaved, but it's really not like that. I honestly believe there are no bad kids, okay? It's children who are not getting what they need in life, the kind of stimulation that they need. Alternatively, when you are giving them activities that are too challenging for them, they get frustrated. Again, they act out. Again, they do things that we label as misbehavior. And these children are, you know, called naughty and they are reprimanded and things like that. But when we can provide them with activities that will help them build the skills that is appropriate for every age and stage, that provides them with the knowledge that is right for them at that time, it's going to help them become successful, independent adults. When you are, you know, in the trap of being you know, a good enough parent, you don't have that information. You don't have the, the you know, the knowledge about what does my two-year-old child need? <clears throat> what does my five-year-old child need to be stimulated? What is too much for them? When am I pushing them too hard? And then they're getting frustrated and parents will come and say, why is my child acting out? But again, like I said, we have to take a step back and observe and see what is happening here and how best we can provide for our child. How do we do this? It's fine for me to say, yes, I want you to do this. This is the way to do it, but how? How does that happen? We're gonna talk about that. Now, being a good enough parent and being a Montessori parent are very different approaches to parenting. There are a lot of similarities, okay? Um, when I was researching about good enough parenting and learning about it, I said, wow, you know, a lot of this really aligns with what I believe in as a Montessori parent, as a Montessori educator, but there are a lot of differences as well. It's also important to note that a good enough parent is not a Montessori parent because a Montessori parent takes it above and beyond. But a Montessori parent is definitely a good enough parent, okay? Because they are doing so much and we're going to talk about that, okay? And they're doing it the right way. So like I said before, 
Montessori applies a lot of the same principles that you will find in good enough parenting, but a lot more than that. It takes it further and deeper uh, to a better place for your child. So how do we know that we're good enough? We don't have a clear picture of what our role is, okay? I don't know what a good enough parent is. Nobody has told me that, you No, know, there are some certain rules. A good enough parent teaches math. A good enough parent takes their child on picnics. A good enough parent does cooking with their child. I don't know. There's no clear guideline. There's no curriculum or there's no syllabus or something like that. So what happens in that case is that I'm just going to impose my own agenda, what I feel might be right as a parent. Somebody else will do something else that they feel is right. And we don't have the tools to make learning easy for our children, to give them the correct experiences and opportunities for where they are at in their development. Many of us follow the way that we were brought up. Okay, so this is what I've, I've, the way I was brought up, this is what my parents did. And, and, you know, I think I've turned out pretty good. So I'm going to follow the same thing with my children. Or I've seen other parents who feel, oh, my God, I really did not like the way I was brought up. I, you know, I don't appreciate that. I'm going to go a totally different way. All right. And they're doing something completely opposite. But still, there are no guidelines. We are just kind of winging it. We're shooting in the dark. We're grabbing at things from everywhere. And there's no specific plan for my child. What Montessori does is it gives us a map and it guides us how to support our children the best way. Okay. Here's where I tell you that this was my secret. When people ask me, how did you raise three children and do it so calmly and, um, you know, raise children who are really independent, well-rounded, um, you know, uh, they're, they're peaceful, they know how to make decisions. I mean, how did you do it? And I always tell them, I didn't do anything. I cannot take the credit for this. It wasn't me. It was Montessori. I was lucky enough to do my Montessori training before I had my children, about uh, three or four years before I had children. So once I, you know, gave birth, it was all there for me. She, she has understood, Dr. Montessori has understood the child so deeply, has tapped into what they need from a scientific as well as a psychological and emotional viewpoint that she has laid it out on a platter for us and said to us, this is what children need. And she shows us how to deliver it. So that was the secret to, to my dealing with my challenges as a parent. I'm not saying I didn't have challenges. Of course, everybody does. But uh, Montessori made it 100 times easier than I think it would have been. So what Montessori does that is different from just saying I'm a good enough parent is that it provides us with guidance and tools on how to meet our child where they are, whether they're two, they're three, four, five. It gives us very specific ideas. Um, it gives us very specific activities and tools that we can use to help our child. It's based on scientific research. Dr. Montessori was a doctor first, okay? Uh, she studied medicine. And along her journey of studying medicine as an intern, she had to go and do some work in a school for children who are uh, mentally disabled. And in those days, this was in the early 1900s, children who had any kind of different abilities, they were considered, you know, they, they, they're unteachable. There's nothing we can do with these children. And she worked with these children and she was able to educate them. And she said, if this system, that I'm developing works so well with these children with um, you know, learning difficulties, why can't I apply it to every child? And that's when she started her own school. You know, I'm just giving you the nutshell story because it's, it goes into so much depth. Uh, and she worked with 40 children who were from a very low income background and they were wild, okay? They were left 
to their own accord to do what they wanted. So they were really, really wild what they would uh, consider very badly misbehaved, like very badly behaved children. And by applying her methodology and meeting every child where they were and observing them and learning about what does every child need? What excites them? What frustrates them? What challenges them? What pushes them? What makes them excited? She was able to develop this beautiful philosophy and create these amazing tools that satisfy the child so deeply um, and takes them to this, this level where they're happy children who share, who get along, who communicate well, who have respect, who have obedience. Uh, it's, it's amazing. People couldn't believe what had what change had occurred with these children when they saw them you know in the coming months and she herself was amazed i can't believe there's such a big change in these children she called them new children because they were so different from what they started out as and the beauty is that this is a tried and tested methodology it's been in practice for over 100 years and it's still successful and people are still learning and we have you know so many people enrolling in our courses to learn about it uh, and then coming back and telling us how fabulously it's working with their children. So it's, it's a guaranteed philosophy that works. So how exactly then does the Montessori approach promote being better than good enough? How does it help us as parents to be better than good enough? Now, good enough parenting, one of the, you know, things that they say is we should encourage children to explore. Okay, but how? What do I do? Okay, if, if nobody tells me, what does that mean? What does exploration mean? Does it mean that, you know, I take them outdoors? Does it mean that I keep a room with lots of toys? What kind of toys? Uh, is it, you know, exploring with writing? I don't know. Tell me what, right? It's a very loose statement. Whereas Montessori says, yes, definitely exploration is high on our list, but we, she has prepared this environment for children to explore with activities that are suited for ages from two to six. Now, of course, I'm talking about the early childhood area because uh, that's our area of focus, but Montessori actually goes all the way up to university applying similar thoughts and similar philosophy. Sorry, just give me a minute. So rather than just having a home filled with toys that I might think are okay for my child, Montessori has very specific equipment and materials. Every material that is in that classroom has multi-purposes. It helps the children to develop writing skills. It helps them to develop reading skills. It helps them to grow in concentration and focus. It teaches them math. It helps them to coordinate their body because they're still developing their gross motor skills at this age. There's so many things that they learn from even just one piece of material. That's how deeply she has thought about the activities that she has uh, created for children. Uh, Good Enough Parenting says, we've got to encourage our, parent, our children to be independent. Again, Montessori says independence is very important. It's not the time anymore where, you know, she's never believed that children, we should do things for the children. She always says, never help a child at a task which he can succeed. Show them how to do it and then tell them, would you like to try? But don't do it for them because little children are just itching to do things by themselves. I know you've experienced this with your children. You do something and your child snatches and say, no, I want to do it myself, right? You've experienced this, I'm sure of it, we all have. They don't want things to be done for them. They want to learn how to do it. But we can't just, I mean, I can't just tell my child, okay, you know, you want to eat by yourself, just do it, right? He needs to have some skills to be able to do that. My child wants to give himself a bath or he wants to make himself a sandwich. I can't just say, okay, I'm going to encourage you know, independence because I'm a good enough parent, but I have to make sure that my child has some skills before, right? He has to have built some foundation before I can give him 
the freedom to do these different activities. And that's what happens in our classroom. We have a whole area of study called the exercises of practical life. And over here, the children are learning a whole range of activities that will help them uh, feed themselves, make meals, dress themselves, put on their shoes, clean the home, all things that you and I might not think are important, you and I might not enjoy, but for them, this is really important work. It's making them feel capable. It's giving them the ability to trust themselves, to be able to function as you and I. Remember, we talked about this. We are the role models. They look up to us and they want to be like us. So they are constantly trying to uh, imitate us and they want to do the activities that we do as well. But we've got to help them to do those activities. We've got to give them some foundation so that they keep growing in independence. Good Enough Parenting says, encourage creativity, allow your children to be creative. Okay, so most of us would look at that as, you know, let's get art and craft supplies and give them many opportunities to paint and color and, you know, create, but it goes much deeper than that, okay? Creativity is not limited to just art and craft work. What happens in Montessori is that we have multi-sensory materials. They, you know, they stimulate your sense of sight, the sense of touch, smell, taste, all of these things are being stimulated. And the children are allowed to use these materials in many different and creative ways. One of the uh, criticisms or misconceptions of Montessori is that it does not in encourage creativity, but actually it's happening all the time. Children will take a piece of material and they will use it in ways that we could have never even imagined. I mean, I'm telling you, I've been in this field for over 25 years. And sometimes I come and see a child using the same piece of material and he's built something that I have never seen before. And we encourage it and we allow them to, they, they have opportunities to explore and do things in ways that you know, opens their mind. The way the materials are designed, there are relationships between the materials. They will have similar sizes or similar colors. So the children end up matching and building things on top of each other. And they're discovering things about size and shape and color and weight in a very natural way. These are not things I can teach them. They are not grown ups where we can lecture them they have to experience it. So their creativity and imagination is growing through actual work with materials, with manipulatives, and that's how they're developing these beautiful skills. You know, talking about imagination and creativity, one of the things that would always drive me crazy is when I would walk into a preschool and see the wall, the bulletin board, and there will be a picture, let's say it's a train, and there'll be 20 trains and they're all blue with yellow wheels and gray smoke coming out the top. They look exactly the same. It's an art and craft, craft activity that the children have been working on and everybody's looks exactly the same. Where is the creativity and imagination there, right? We are just making our children think one way, but in Montessori, their minds are so open. They're allowed to to expand and think in many, many different ways. GEP, Good Enough Parenting says, use discipline wisely. You're not going to punish your children. You're not going to um, beat them and things like that. Have develop good relationships with them. Um, but what happens in Montessori, this is one of my favorite things I have to tell you. It helps children develop self-discipline, okay? Sometimes it's hard for people to understand this, but I want you to just take a moment and imagine that teacher in school who was really not your favorite teacher. And whenever I ask this question in class, and I say, do you have a teacher that you didn't like so much? And everybody's hand shoots up. Yes, yes, I did. And uh, I say, were you scared of that teacher? And most of them would say, yes, I was scared. What was your behavior like in that classroom? I was always well behaved because I was really scared. Uh, but, you know, when I left, when you leave that classroom, you forget about everything. 
You behave because you're afraid, okay? Then I want to ask you to think about that teacher you really, really, the teacher that you loved so much, okay? You also behave in that teacher's class, am I right? You behave well, you follow the rules, but the reason you're doing this is because you have respect for that teacher. You like the relationship that you've developed with this teacher. You do not want to disappoint her. You don't want to upset him. So you're always very behaved, well behaved there. You put your work on in on time. You don't disrupt the class with silly behavior. What you're doing is you're disciplining yourself, okay? So in Montessori, we develop this. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. There are steps to it. And when you study with us, we, we teach you how to do that. And we have some brilliant videos on uh, YouTube that show you about how you can help your child develop that self-discipline. And this happens even at home. Forget about school. We don't want to have to punish our children and, or tell them, you know, well, if you tidy your toys, then I will give you a treat or I'll take you out for a movie. We want them to do it because they want to do it. And that happens seamlessly in a Montessori classroom. It is part of the whole process that's going on. The children grow in self-discipline. And that's one of the greatest takeaways I've always felt because I've seen as my children grew up and they went on into elementary school and secondary school, I never ever had to chase my children to have a shower or eat their dinner or do their homework or study for exams because in those early years, those first six years of their lives, being in a Montessori setting, living in a Montessori home, they developed that self-discipline and they knew that, okay, I have this task coming up. I've got to get this done. I have to set targets for myself. It was, it's really a very um, valuable skill that they develop that carries on with them throughout their years. These are just a few things and a few ways in which Montessori shows us how to parent beyond being just a good enough parent. It covers all the principles of good enough parenting. And at the same time, it gives us very specific tools and ideas and guidance on how to parent in a good way and make it work successfully without the frustration of a child who's misbehaving. We have all the tools to iron through all those, those difficulties and challenges. At the same time, what's happening your child is becoming independent, they're becoming responsible, they're becoming reflective, and the academics of Montessori are way above and beyond what the standard academics are for children at preschool level. And it's not putting pressure on the children when they do that. It is stimulating them, they are excited to do it, they have the ability to concentrate and do it with full um, you know, full dedication and wanting to achieve the results and success for their own happiness, not because they want an A, not because they want a star, not because they want their mother to say, oh, I'm so proud of you, but because it gives them self-satisfaction. That's another one of the brilliant takeaways from Montessori. Anybody who, you know, is a Montessori parent who has, you know, studied some Montessori, uh, anybody who has, um, got their child in a Montessori school will agree with me on all of these points that, uh, you know, these are the things that your child will develop. I'm sure Mary also can agree because um, she's a Montessori parent as well as her child was in a Montessori school. So the Montessori approach takes you beyond anything you could imagine, beyond being a mediocre parent, beyond accepting that this is what I can do, it takes you to being your best and giving your child the best so they can be their best. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to share my passion and my love for what I do with all of you. Um, at the core of our entire company is we are all passionate about Montessori and we believe in it so much that we want everybody to benefit the way we have with our families. So that's why we do what we do. And that's part of everything. It's more than a business, it's a passion.
So we'd love for you to be part of this uh, Montessori family that we are creating across the world. Thank mm -hmm. you.